हाय ऑल ऑप्शन इसमें साउंड इज ऑडिबल यस तो गिट वाज क्लियर टू ऑल ऑफ यू राइट या ऑलमोस्ट क्लियर सर okay so today we are going to start with the aws cloud now okay so in the aws cloud uh, we are going to follow this documentation okay this documentation i uploaded okay so till now whatever the things we know in the aws cloud uh, we know how to create the aws account okay then we know about that when we click on the services there are so many services of the aws are available okay uh currently we are going through the compute service if we click on this compute okay and in this compute we went to the ec2 service basically okay and in this ec2 we are seeing all this entire dashboard okay and here we already know that this is the reason okay we can select different different reason uh this is our account billing dashboard everything okay coming to the instances part here we'll be seeing all the ec2 instances created in this particular reason okay if you are going to change the reason then number of instances whatever we launched in that particular reason will be this one only okay now till now whenever we are launching the instances okay whenever we are launching the instances like this uh we are going with the mostly with the amazon linux machine okay we are going with mostly with the amazon linux machine and we are going with the amazon linux second am but you can go with the ubuntu also mac os also mac os is paid this is not free tier see free tier eligible is anymore that means mac os if you are going to use you have to pay some charges ubuntu free tier eligible that means we can use it freely okay today our goal is to launch the instance that is running on the windows okay linux we are already comfortable with uh, we have to follow something for the windows okay and now for let's start to launch the win instance from the windows uh so name i am giving okay now they are saying which image you want to take i want to select the windows one okay now we have so many different options let's go with the 22 bytes only okay whatever the default they are taking uh after this they are saying instance type whether you want to go with the one cpu one gb or some another machine we know that windows for windows one gb ram is very less okay it will not work that good okay but since it is free tier only so let's we are going with the one cpu and one gb ram machine only okay now key pair you can select any key pair okay so take an example i am selecting a key pair this one okay network setting you don't have to do any changes by default when you select the windows server automatically they will open the rdp traffic okay uh, when you select the linux machine they automatically open the ssh traffic and rdp is a protocol which help us to basically connect to the windows machine so we don't have to do any changes here just the things we have to do is the windows select 2022 base everything will be exactly same and the storage by default in the linux is it was taking 8 gb storage only but you know that windows is graphical user interface it will take little bit more storage okay so that's why uh, they give us the 30 gb storage and we cannot go more than 30 gb also why because in the aws free tier eligible limit is a 30 gb only so let's skip 30 gb only don't do any changes and simply click on launch instance a new ec2 instance is going to be launched okay with the windows machine or windows operating system this will select instances and here i am going to filter out the result for the running instances okay now the machine is ready okay now
how to connect to this windows machine right so if you'll click on this connect button if you'll click on this connect button here after selecting this box so there is a second option called rdp client click on this now they are saying to connect using this rdp client okay you have to download a remote desktop file and make sure uh, this uh, windows machine connection you can do it from the windows laptop only if you want to do it from mac os or something okay then you have to use a third party software okay because by default mac os is totally different from windows right they don't support the rdp or something if you want to have a support you have to go with the third party software okay so they are asking us to download a remote desktop file okay if i'm clicking on this they will ask us to download this okay so i'm downloading in a folder in a folder i'm creating and i'm saving this okay so this rdp file is saved now if you want to connect right the what is the next thing you have to do once the rdp file is downloaded simply open this file from your windows laptop in windows we already have a software called remote desktop connection that help us to connect to the remotely windows machine that is running somewhere different location so if i'll click on this connect button right so they are saying okay you are going to connect to this particular machine 3.111.37.196 correct username is administrator that also correct now they are talking about password we don't know the password of this windows machine so how we can connect so here they are saying if you don't know the password you can click on this get password button and in this get password they are saying when you are launching the instance that time you attached a key pair with this name cloud 27 key mumbai can you upload the private key file this one so i can make sure that you are the owner so i can show you the password I'm going to click on upload private key file and I have to select I have to select cloud 27 key Mumbai this one PEM file not the PPK okay you have to upload the PEM file so I will just select this click on open so see this PEM file is opened here come down and click on decrypt password click on decrypt password a password will be shown here just copy this password okay come here in the rdp paste this password here and click on okay and we'll be able to see that okay what is password is incorrect okay now yeah this time it's correct click on yes now it is going to connect to this machine and see now currently we'll be seeing the black screen but you are seeing that we are connecting to a windows laptop that is located somewhere else since it is the graphical user interface it will take little bit time to load okay in the linux it was loading fast because it was just a CLI part command line interface but here you are going to see the entire windows screen as we are seeing in our personal laptop Click on yes. I'm sure this is the Windows machine we connected. Just give me a second.
Okay, so now you are seeing this Windows machine. Whatever the things you want to do it in the Windows laptop, everything you can do it. Okay. Like take an example. If I want to go here, and take an example. Let me go with the Fire Explorer first. So see, uh, this 30 GB storage, whatever we can get, that is visible, right? Similar to if somebody want to open the browser, they can come here, they can open the browser. If you want to install some application, you can do it. So whatever the things you want to do it in the Windows machine, everything you can do it, okay? But currently this machine is running only on the one CPU and one GB RAM machine. So definitely it is not going to that much faster, okay, as we expect. See, currently it will run 1 GB RAM only. So it is not that much faster, but yes, our Windows machine connectivity is done, okay? Similarly, if you want to disconnect, you have to come mouse upside, okay? And you have to close this button, okay? If you are going to close this button and click on okay, so it will be disconnected, okay? Now, the problem here is now, uh, problem here is, take an example, if somebody is going to shut down this machine, like if I'm going to stop in this machine. Now let's wait until this machine is getting a stop. It is a stop. Now let's start this machine again. So you know, as soon as this EC2 instance is going to start, so whatever the public IP previously this machine was having, right? That public IP is going to be changed. So let's this machine running first. Now, once this machine is running, you can verify here. Okay, so you can verify the public IP is changed. Previously, the public IP was different. Uh, now the public IP is are different. So the problem here is now if somebody is going to click on connect button again, again you are going to follow. Okay. So and this is the previous RDP file that I downloaded, right? If I'm going to click on this, so they are connecting to the previous IP only 3111371960. That means if I'm going to click on connect, this is not going to work because IP address is changed, right? Previous IP address was different. This IP address is different. So that's why will be not able to connect to this machine and at some time they will say uh, uh, that connection is unestablished like this okay so now what we can do again to connect to this machine again you have to manually download this remote desktop file okay again you have to download this desktop file and this time whatever the file you are downloading okay this time whatever the file you are downloading if you're going to click on open this file connected and uh, again they are asking the password uh, i'm giving the password i already have the password password there is no any problem but see this time it is connecting to 65.2.150 click on ok then we'll see again we are connected to that particular machine
okay and again we are connected to this machine so making sense that um, basically whenever we are uh, stopping the machine the public ip is going to change and if the public ip is going to change then we have to again download the rdp file this file latest one is this thing is clear to all of you yes or no yes now the problem is take an example if somebody uh, it, there is a someone another person right they want to use the windows machine so for them what i have to do i have to give only this rdp file like for you also if you want to connect to this machine i have to just give you this rdp file okay in which basically this public dns and username is there okay and then i will give you the password okay then you will be able to connect to this machine but now the problem is if i'm going to shut down this machine right and tomorrow again i will start it so whatever the RDP file I given you today, that will be not working for you. So again, you are going to ask me the RDP file. So similarly, if there are a few more machines are there and I want that IP address will be same, right? It cannot be changed. So we don't have any issue. So for that, we have to go with the static IP. Like in your home also, whenever you buy any broadband, right? So they give you two type of the IP address. Uh, first one is the dynamic IP. That means whenever you are connected to your Wi-Fi, right? Uh, you will get some IP. Like if you are going to search here in the Google My Public IP, you'll be able to see uh, that they will showing you some IP address. Okay, and this IP address, whatever they will showing you here. Okay, uh, this will be random one because we are not paying any extra charges for the IP address. Okay. But now the problem is uh, like if I'm going to shut down my machine and again, if I'm going to start it, maybe this IP address can be different again. Okay. That means this IP address will be keep changing. But if you want to fix this IP, then for that, we have to go with the static IP concept, a static IP. So there are so many broadband providers are there. They can provide you the static IP. Okay. Like in India, take an example, there is a uh, internet provider is the Airtel company. Okay, so if we'll talk about that static IP from the Airtel, they will guide us that how you can get the static IP. Okay, so they are charging around in Indian rupees, they are charging 199 rupees plus GST, something like that. Okay, around 235 rupees per month they will be charging if you want to get a static IP. But the benefit is if I am paying this amount every month, right? So they will give you a fixed IP. Then doesn't matter whether I'm going to shut down machine, start it machine, the IP address is going to be the same. Okay. Why we need to fix our IP address? So for that, there are so many different reasons, okay? One of the main reason is just think like this, you are ordering some product from the any shopping website, okay? And so definitely you will give some address, right? But now that address is dynamic, that means that address will be keep changing, then that packet will be not delivered to your location, right? Because your address is keep changing. Okay, that's why we have to fix the address on that particular address, that particular product is going to be delivered. Similarly, in internet world also, there are so many requirements are there when we'll require to fix our static IP that for like, there are some example for the CCTV cameras. Okay, if you want to install some CCTV TV camera, so it's preferred to go with the static IP so we don't have to remember the IP address always. Okay, or we don't have to check the IP address always to connect to our IP address or to connect our CCTV camera. So like this way, there are so many situations. Here also one situation is, every time we are shutting down this machine, we have to download the new RDP file because this IP address is going to be changed, okay? To solve this problem, we can go with the static IP concept, okay? So in AWS Cloud, they have a concept called Elastic IP. Elastic IP is nothing, just the static IP itself, okay? So if we'll see here, in this elastic IP, if you are going to click on this, okay? So they will say you that currently you don't have any elastic IP address associated, okay? That means currently I don't have any IP address, okay? But this elastic IP is chargeable in nature, okay? In AWS free tire account, they give one IP address free, okay? After that, one more elastic IP, if you are going to create or something, then they will charge you. So if you want to get a static IP, okay? Or elastic IP, you have to simply click on allocate, okay? When you will do the allocate, what is basically happening here is,
Uh, just give me a second. Okay. So when you are coming on this elastic IP, simply you have to just click on allocate. They will give you a static IP address now. So see, we got a IP address 3.110.11.43. Now this IP address is fixed, right? Now nobody in the world can take this IP address until and unless this IP address is present in my account, okay? So nobody in the world will take this IP address. In the entire world, this IP address belongs to me only. Once we got this IP address, now I can use this IP address, okay, for whatever the purpose I want, okay? Take an example, I want to, uh, attach this IP address. Okay, so I will click on action and I will click on associate. I'm saying that I want to associate this elastic IP address. Okay, to which EC2 instance I want to attach. So I want to attach, take an example on the Windows machine, Windows Cloud 27. As soon as I'm going to select that and I will click on associate. Now what is going to happen is this particular IP 3.110 is attached to this Windows machine. This is our Windows machine, right? Now see what is the IP 3.110. Now this machine is having the 3.110 IP, that IP is fixed, right? So now if somebody want to connect, so definitely they have to download remote desktop file one more time because for this particular IP, we never downloaded this, okay? So let me download one more time. But now the benefit is since we downloaded this remote desktop file, the latest one 3.110, if I'm going to open this, I have to give the password, connectivity will be done. Okay, connectivity is going to be done 3.110 machine. Okay, but the benefit is even if I'm going to shut down this machine now, even if I'm going to shut down this machine, Windows one like this. Even I stop this machine. So currently it is in the stopping state. Uh, let's refresh this. Meanwhile, you will see that all the instance are in the stopped state, right? If you'll see any of the instance which is in the stopped state currently, there is no public IP address is written here. Go through any machine, right? See, there is no public IP. Here also, stop, there is no public IP. That means if some machine is in the stopped state, that means it is in powered off state, there will be no public IP. Similarly, in our laptop also, if you are not connected to the internet, there will be no public IP. Okay, and once we connect it to the internet, then only it will be public IP. Similarly, here also all the machine are not having any public IP, okay? But this Windows machine, this Windows machine is having a public IP, even in the stopped state. Why? Because this is not having a dynamic IP. This is having a static IP. And since we are paying the extra charges for this IP, so even this machine will be stopped, this IP will be attached to this machine. That means even if I'm going to start this machine one more time, this IP address is not going to change. This machine will still have the IP address of 3.110 only, okay? And since the IP address is not going to change, so now we can connect to that particular machine using the same RDP file also. So let it be running first. Now this machine is running and you can see that the IP address is same only 3.110. And since the IP address is same, so now you can with the previous RTP file file also, whatever you downloaded, because IP address is not got changed. If I'll click on connect and I will give the password, we'll be still able to connect even after restarting the machine. But previously when there was no elastic IP, so every time we have to download the new RTP file because IP address was getting changed. So hope this is clear to you. Anybody have any doubt in this? I have one quick question. How yeah. is it related to DevOps? DevOps, 
see you are learning the concepts now currently okay in the devops also there will be so many condition will come here you have to fix the it okay and that's the reason like take an example tomorrow you are going to learn the jenkins okay jenkins will be running on the aws cloud itself right so okay. in that aws cloud if you are running and if that ec2 instance ip address is getting keep changing every time you are starting this right so if there are mm -hmm. five devops engineer are there so you cannot keep sharing the public ip each time right there will be a fixed url for all the person who want to use the jenkins and they will hit that url they will be able to see the website right so in the mm -hmm. back end that particular ip address will be fixed then only your address or the pro packet will be delivered on that location I, i'm not just asking about on the ip just i am asking why we are learning aws cloud for devops no see where you are going to do the practical of devops oh, that's the okay. question na you cannot do it on your local laptop your local laptop will be having 8gb ram 16gb ram right but mm -hmm. entire company server you cannot run on your a single person's laptop okay to connect that aws cloud server right okay yeah you will be requiring the servers right and that server mm -hmm. either you can buy it or either you can rent it right If you are mm -hmm. going with buy model, then the company will be having a set up the lab in their own office building, right? With the different different mm -hmm. servers, but that is a one time payment, right? Uh, so the company who are in the starting stage, they don't know whether their product is going to be hit in the market, right? So they mm -hmm. always prefer go with the rental model, and in the rental model, benefit is everything is getting maintained by the AWS engineers. Okay, we don't have to worry about any. Power outages, networking outages, something like that. Everything will be taken care of by the AWS cloud. So that's mm -hmm. the benefit. Just we have to pay the charges. That's all. Yeah, and actually, I heard about the so many certifications, right, in AWS, which is related to DevOps. Like you know, the AWS cloud uh, engineer certification or a solution architect. There are so many certifications, right? So. See, as a DevOps engineer, now your role is not fixed. Okay, it okay. depends on whatever the roles you are interested. You are more towards the cloud, go with the AWS delivery software. Okay, but it mm -hmm. is not like all the companies as a DevOps engineer you will be working on the AWS cloud only. Some companies will be working on the GCP cloud also. Some companies will be working on Azure cloud also, right? Azure, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the thing that depends on situation. Okay. But yeah, most popular is the AWS cloud. That's why we are learning this. Okay. And not only this, since we have the Elastic IP, a static IP now fixed with my account. Okay. So now, if I want that, I want to remove this static IP from that particular machine. So I can simply come here and I can click on Deassociate. Since I done the deassociate, now if we are going to see that particular Windows machine, we will be not able to see that particular IP address here because we deassociated it. And since we have this Elastic IP is still present in my account because I still we are paying the charges, so I can click on action. I can associate this Elastic IP address to any other EC2 instance also. Like I can I can attach to the Jenkins machine. Take an example. Since I attach to the Jenkins machine, now this Jenkins machine have the fixed IP. Now it is going to have a fixed IP like this, three dot one one zero. So from now on, if somebody want to use the Jenkins, I will just share a single IP. Okay, and everybody is going to hit this URL, and they will be able to access the Jenkins. That's the benefit. But if this IP is going to keep changing every time, we have to update it. So that's the problem here. Okay. Any other doubt? Anything? So Elastic IP you can attach to the any of the machines, okay? But make sure first you have to deassociate from one machine, then only you can associate it to another machine. So from and once your practical is done, don't keep this Elastic IP in your account, okay? Because this is chargeable in nature, okay? So if you don't want to use this Elastic IP for that, right? You can simply click on Action. First, deassociate this Elastic IP because we already attached it to one of the machine. 
after dissociating simply click on x and click on release release means now i don't want to use this elastic ip so i can giving back this elastic ip to the aws cloud so aws cloud can allocate this same ip address to some other person okay like this i'll release it now this is released and since it is released so now you don't have to pay any charges for that particular elastic ip so till now if you'll see what we saw okay uh, we saw how to launch the windows machine how to connect it we saw the problem if somebody is going to stop the machine every time you have to download the new rdp file if you don't want to do this then you can go with the method called elastic ip you can go with the method called allocate elastic ip once the elastic ip is allocated you can associate this elastic ip to any of the ec2 instance we associated it to the windows machine then we saw that windows machine got the fixed ip now if somebody want to connect okay so you can connect it and once your practical is done you can simply do the release elastic ip address then this ip address will be released and nobody will be you will be not going to no longer associate to that okay and that's why you'll be not getting any further charges in your account also now once we saw this so the next part will be the storage services okay so we'll be going to see a storage services one by one from tomorrow okay so to giving you the idea what type of the storage service we are going to see so we'll be seeing three types of the storage service there one will be the s3 second will be the ebs third will be the efs okay now what is the difference between s3 ebs and efs so s3 is similar to the google drive whatever the things you can do in the google drive exactly same thing you can do in the s3 also okay in the google drive what we do we upload the files okay and then we get a link we share that link to anybody in the world that particular person will be able to access the file similarly in the s3 also you can upload the files you can get the link you can share that link to anybody in the world they will be able to access your file so it is just like a google drive only, okay and in aws s3 they give you up to 5 gb of storage totally free okay in the free diagram now after that s3 will be going to see one more storage called ebs volume ebs volume is just like the hard disk of your laptop okay s3 is just like the google drive uh ebs volume is just like the hard disk can you know any difference between the hard disk and the google drive or do you think both are same anybody is there anything that you can do it in the EBS wall or you can do it in your hard disk of your laptop, but you cannot do it in the Google Drive? Anybody? Uh, we can uh, we can format our, uh, our hard drive and uh, split our uh, hard drive into sections according to our needs, like 10 GB, uh, like if we have okay. a 50 GB. You're talking about partitions. Yeah, yeah, partition. Okay. We can make our partitions on our own, like 20, 10, 20, 20, or 15, 15, 20, something like that. Yeah, okay. But in the Google Drive, we cannot do this. Okay, that yeah. is one of the things. Any other thing you can think of? Uh, mm. But Google Drive, we can share our stuff with someone else, with some other users. Uh, we can we can also share our local drive. Uh, I don't have anything on my mind right now. Okay, so can you install any application or software on the Google Drive? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah right but that you can yeah. do it on your local hard disk right yeah, yeah yeah that means running any application running any code running any software will require the local hard disk that cannot be done on the google drive similarly this all things we cannot do in the s3 bucket also okay when we'll be learning s3 we cannot do it because in the starting itself i said s3 is just like a google drive so that means if i want to install some software if you want to use it as a local volume right that means we have to go with the EBS volume and EBS volume we are already doing it from the first class itself that means whenever we are launching the instance if you remember we are selecting the hard disk also at the last by default we select 8 GB hard disk only but always they ask for a storage right 8 GB hard disk this is just like a EBS volume and that's it they are talking about EBS 
It is just like a hard disk. So if I connected hard disk of 1 GB, 8 GB, so that means inside this EC2 instance machine, you can store up to 8 GB all amount. Okay. And now second thing you said that we can create multiple partition, everything. So these are also things we'll be going to see. Okay. When I will show you the EBS volume, that how you can create the multiple partition, how you can format the EBS volume, these all things will be seen. So this is about the second type of the storage, this EBS part, volumes one. Okay, already we created so many EBS volume as whenever you are launching a EC2 instance, automatically a EBS volume is also getting created. Since we saw 30 GB storage we created for the Windows machine like that, so it is there. Okay, so these are the things. Uh, and the third storage we are going to see it as a EFS. EFS is just like a NFS. Have you heard about the NFS? Anybody? NFS mount, the, those are the mounts. Yeah, network file system. Okay, it is basically networking related thing. So it is something like this, take an example in your home, there is a router, right? That router comes with a USB port also. Okay, if you see some high level router, uh, like uh, basically some standard router, okay, that comes with little bit higher price range, okay? They comes with the USB port also. Have you seen any router with the USB port, anybody here? Router coming with USB port? No? Notice how that router with USB. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait. Take an example. Let me show you any router here. Let me go in the image sections. As you'll see, that some routers comes with the USB port like this. Right? This is a normal router, right? But this is a USB port. In this USB port, they are saying that you can either connect a printer, you can connect a FTP server, or you can connect a storage. What is the meaning of this? If somebody connected a storage here, like you connected a hard disk to this, now you know what is going to happen as soon as you connect it to the hard disk there, okay? All the devices, all the devices of your home, which is either your mobile phone, tablet, laptop, which is connected to the same router, right? Same Wi-Fi router, okay? Then whatever the storage you are present, like whatever the data is present inside this particular hard disk, it can be accessible in all the devices across your home. Is that making sense? Mm -hmm. Because we are connecting it. So, at if one we, <clears throat> so if we attach a USB in our router and we have a smart TV and that smart TV is connected to this router through Wi-Fi. So, and if we have any uh, video or any we can so it depends on the smart tv operating system also right because see mm. if a smart tv operating system is coming with any some different operating system like tizen or something right mm. so in that you don't get that much uh, permission or something that you got it but if a smart android tv yeah if, if it is smart android, tv you can do it okay if it is android tv you can easily do it because see android tv is a open source right that means we can do anything like see in the um, just think like this, Android, mobile phone and the iPhone, right? iPhone have some limitation there. Okay, you cannot do so many things in your iPhone that you can do it in your Android, mobile phone. But right? in a smart TV, if you have net, like apps like Netflix or Amazon Prime or... No, but that is available, see, that is available in your iPhone also, right? But in the iPhone, you cannot download the crack version easily. Right, but in the Android, we can download the crack version of application also easily. Right, so mm. th that is the limitation from the operating system. So it depends mm. which operating system you are using in your. Yeah. If they mm. are opening the jailbreak type of the thing, something where you can do some changes that time only. Okay, mm. because see, this storage can be connected. So if your Android TV in the Android TV, or take an example, any other operating system also you are using, okay? But if in that, if you are able to install an application that is related to the FTP server or NFS server, there are so many applications available in the market, okay? If any application you are able to install in your TV, then you can easily read it. There will be no any problem in that, okay? Similarly, in our laptop also, how to read it? So there is an option share called the network, right? Whenever you will click on the network, you will be automatically seeing whatever the router is connected. See, in my case, there is a router is coming here, right? So we can read the data from this particular router. Making sense? 
So whatever yeah. the networking device is connected in your home, that will start to come here. Okay. And take an example, I want to, and even reverse can also possible now from our laptop, like from our laptop is also connected to some network, right? So if I'm going here and if I'm doing the right click here, and if I'm going in the properties, so there will be option called sharing. If I will share this, right, then what is going to happen is if the same, some devices is connected to the same network, they will be able to read this particular path. That means whatever the file is present inside this particular folder, all the person who are from the local network, they will be able to access it. So these all things are possible. So why we require all these things? What is the need of this? The only one requirement, right? Requirement is if there are 10 laptops with me, okay, and I want to share a file with all the 10 laptops. So the first way will be the hard disk way, right? In which I am storing the data in the hard disk and then I am attaching manually this hard disk one by one to all the 10 laptops, right? You know that hard disk or pen drive have a limitation. You can attach it to only one uh, USB port at a time, right? You can attach a pen drive to a single laptop at the same time, okay? So once the work is done, once we copied the file, then again, we'll detach the pen drive, we'll connect it to some other machine. But in place of that, if I'm attaching this pen drive to here, and all the 10 laptop I'm connecting to the same router, so we'll be able to access the data parallelly, right? So, so all the 10 laptop will be able to write the data here, will be able to read the data from here, so everything is done parallelly, and that's the benefit. That also will be seen in the AWS Cloud, using a service called EFS. Okay, so these all things we'll be seeing one by one. Okay, tomorrow mostly we'll be seeing the S3 and EBS, and after that we'll be seeing the EFS like that. Okay, so I just given you idea S3 just equal to Google Drive, EBS just equal to your hard disk, EFS just equal to the NFS based system that is the networking based file system. Okay. Mm -hmm. So there are different ways, but in AWS cloud, we see it as a EFS, okay? And in the real world scenario, we see it as a NFS. Like in the real world, we see it as a static IP. In AWS, we see it as a elastic IP. So this is just the naming difference, but the concept is same only. A static IP also giving you the fixed IP, and this one also giving you the fixed IP. Similarly, whatever the things NFS is providing you, that all the laptop can read and write parallelly to a server or a file system. Exactly same thing you can do using the EFS also. Okay, so just practice this Windows one and Elastic IP one and other part we'll cover in the next class. Okay, so that's all from my side for today. Thanks all of you. Thank you.